Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. This morning I'll be reading from Matthew chapter 9 verses 35 through 38 and this is what it says. And Jesus was going about all the cities and the villages teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every kind of disease and every kind of sickness. And seeing the multitude he felt compassion for them because they were distressed and downcast like sheep without a shepherd. And he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into his harvest. Pray with me. Jesus, this day is your day, and it's a day of praise. It's a day of thanks. It's a day, Lord, we ask that you improve our eyes and improve our ears. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. This morning I read from the Gospel of Matthew, and Matthew begins his gospel the way a gospel ought to begin. Gospel means good news, and that's how he starts it. He starts with the good news of Jesus' birth. But the thing I like, like uh, so much about the way Matthew does it is he, uh, he ties it to what God's always done. The good news of God's rec rescue operation is tied to the Old Testament, it's tied that, that Jesus didn't just wake up one day and say, Ed, I, I think I'll say some good things that people will like a whole lot. No. No, Jesus came for God's rescue operation. And when the angel said, you shall call his name Jesus, the name Jesus means rescue. That Jesus is going to be the one to rescue them. The way that it was restated again was his name shall be called Emmanuel, God with us. And when God's with us, did we have a different set of eyes, a different set of ears. We experienced the world in a different way. And so Jesus came to, to usher in the, the, the word that he uses, a, a kingdom of God. A kingdom right here in the middle of the, the old kingdom. What he tells us in Matthew is that his kingdom comes, God's kingdom comes when his will is done. And it's done here on earth and it's done in heaven. It's not a kingdom that just happens when you die. It's, it's a kingdom that Jesus ushered in with his birth, his crucifixion, and his resurrection right here in the, the middle of the old creation that gives us eyes and ears to, to see and to hear what God's up to around us. And we can take part in it, take part in his rescue operation. And so this, the verses we read this morning say that that's exactly what Jesus was doing. That he was going about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom. And not only did he preach the gospel of the kingdom, he showed them what it was to look like. He healed every kind of disease and every kind of sickness. And then it says that he saw the people. He saw the multitudes and he felt 
compassion for them. Because verse 38, 36 says, because they were distressed and downcast like sheep without a shepherd. It's good to know that when Jesus sees the distressed and downcast, he has compassion. If ever there's something that ought to be compelling for this world today, there's so much distress. There's so much that's downcast that Jesus, Jesus shows compassion. Those two words, distressed and downcast, that, that they're translated differently in, in, in different, different Bible translations. One translation says harassed and helpless. I guess when, when sheep don't know what to do, they're harassed and helpless. When they're without a shepherd, another translation says they, they're fainted and scattered. Well, whether it's harassed and helpless, fainted and scattered, or distressed and downcast, we know that it's not a good thing. They're, they're like sheep without a shepherd. Sheep without a shepherd. And Jesus sees and Jesus hears and he goes one more step. He has compassion. And the word that it uses, they're like sheep without a shepherd. Well, Jesus, who, who drew more from the Psalms than any other book in the Old Testament, it's obvious. It's obvious. He's drawn from the 23rd Psalm. Which sheep without a shepherd, they might be distressed. They might be harassed. They might be fainted. They might be scattered. They might be a lot of things. But sheep with a shepherd? The 23rd Psalm tells us, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters and he restores my soul. It's the shepherd. It's the shepherd. It's Jesus, the good shepherd, that gives contentment where we don't want. We, that we can, that, 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 that he's the good shepherd that leads us in, into that pasture where we're content. We see that there's more than enough all around us. He's the good shepherd that leads us in the, the still waters where there's peace. And he's the one that restores our soul. And that's what I want to talk about this morning. That the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. If ever there was one thing that was natural to us humans, it's, it's want. And the desire to follow our wants. And if ever there was a way that we're like sheep, well, that would be it. Isaiah 53, 6 says, all of us like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. And it's because sheep focus on whatever it is that they want. And it's that, that food that's right in front of them. They don't keep, wander with their heads up, wanting to make sure that they're close by the shepherd. The shepherd has to keep track of the sheep. It's the sheep that begin to wander because their eyes are on their wants. And if ever there's anything that's natural to us human, it's to know what, to follow our wants, to follow what we see, to follow what we hear. A few years ago, the founder of Domino's Pizza, Thomas Monahan, he had a spiritual awakening. And he began to sell off his stuff. Well, being the founder of Domino's Pizza, he had quite a bit of stuff. He sold off three houses that were, that were designed by Frank Lloyd Wright. He also owned the Detroit Tigers baseball team, and he sold that as well. He sold off 30 vintage cars. One of them was a Bugatti worth $13 million. And what he said was that none of these things I've bought, and I mean none of them, has ever really made me happy. To follow our wants is the most natural thing in the world. But there's no life in it. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it abundantly. It's not the amount of stuff. It's not the abundance of stuff. 
It's the eyes that see what God's already provided. It's the ears that, that hear the voice of God where others just hear whispers. It's a kingdom that's been ushered in by Jesus and, and we follow Jesus as, as the good shepherd. But you don't have to be a billionaire. You don't have to be a billionaire like Thomas Moynihan to know that, that following our wants doesn't lead to life. That following our wants leaves us distressed and downcast. Jesus, Jesus is the good shepherd and he calls us to more than following our wants. He calls us to a life where we follow him and it's the, well, it's the contentment that follows us. Jesus saw them, he sees us. He saw that they were distressed and downcast as sheep without a shepherd. Those who follow the shepherd, they know what it is to be content. But not only that, those who follow the shepherd know what it is to know peace. That sheep are naturally poor swimmers. And if it's fast moving water, they are frightened of it. They know that the, they're their fleece has a tendency to, to hold water. And those hooves, they weren't meant for swimming at all. So they stay very clear of fast moving water. The shepherd knows this and leads sheep where there's peace. By the still waters. Peace. Where their hearts aren't frightened. Sheep can't see that on their own. They have to follow the shepherd to find the place of peace. It's no different for you and me as well. So often it is the most natural thing rather than following the shepherd is to try and follow peace. To try and follow peace. And peace is not a bad thing. It's a good thing, very good thing. A noble venture to follow peace. Read a story that a little while back, 1,200 peacemakers and peace marchers gathered in Los Angeles for a peace march noble venture really noble endeavor well before the march began while they were trying to form up they were trying to figure out who was going to lead the march well half the group disbanded because they began bickering about the peace march well it didn't stop there of the half that were left the others began to be polarized by was this really a peace, mar a peace march if if some people were riding vehicles and so they began to argue about which ones were going to ride and which ones were going to walk and was that really permitted. So they wanted to take a vote on it. Well, then they began to argue about who could vote. Could children vote in this? That, that didn't seem right at all that the children, well, they decided that the children could vote. And after the vote, the, they didn't agree to the vote, that the vote was invalid because some of them thought children shouldn't vote and they refused to talk to each other at a peace march. I'm going to misquote C.S. Lewis for just a little bit here. One of my favorite misquotes of C.S. Lewis, because I can't remember the, the quote exactly the way it went, is, is that demons in this life, the real evil in this life, it doesn't come from fallen rats or fleas. That the demons in this life they come from fallen angels. That it's whatever's highest, whatever's best, whatever's most virtuous. It's when we begin to follow these things and not Jesus that we go most astray. Jesus is the good shepherd. And you and I are called to follow him, but every once in a while, Good folks, well-meaning folks, want to follow something good that's not God. And they set their 
their sights on what well, we need to be about shooting the wolves rather than following the good shepherd. And we get crossways with one another because rather than following the good shepherd, we want to follow some good, some pe- and there's no peace in it. There's no peace in it at all. And we wind up distressed and downcast. Jesus said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. This world cannot give us peace. But Jesus, the good shepherd, already has. Take peace. Take peace. If ever there's a message for this world, it's that message that Jesus offers peace the way that the world can't. And now we're so caught up in, in strife, not because of, of a, 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 a deficiency of resources, not because there's so little. Maybe it's because there's so much. And sheep who wander tend to want, follow their wants, rather than Jesus. Sheep who wander tend, well, they tend to follow whatever's highest, whatever's most normal. They try and follow peace rather than the good shepherd. So, it's what we see all around us. The distressed and the downcast. The good shepherd, the good shepherd, the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He gives contentment. He leads me beside the still waters. He offers peace. And then scripture tells, he restores my soul. He restores my soul. Reader's Digest. It's an old magazine with some really great old stories. One of my favorite old stories is a true story about a fellow who rented a car and a driver for a funeral. They started off, headed to the, to the cemetery and, and the man reached over to get the driver's attention. He tapped him on the shoulder and the driver just about jumped out of his skin. Well, the man apologized, said, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to startle you. To which the driver said, that's all right. It's just, I usually drive the hearse. <laughs> Well, life has its surprises. It's full of surprises. And I don't think anyone is surprised to hear that on the cross, Jesus died to forgive your sins and mine. I think what people are often surprised by is that he rose from the grave. He rose from the grave to live his life through you and through me. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. That the old things passed away and new things have come. The new creation, the new kingdom has a new set of eyes, a new set of ears where he lives his life through you and through me. And we see the world in in a very, very different way. We see this world with compassion for the distressed and the downcast. Years ago, when I first moved to Roswell, I was trying to set up uh, an exercise routine for myself. And I began walking the area. Uh, And walking quite a bit, still do. I, I don't know if you knew this, there are a lot of hills around here. You may not see them or feel them in a car, but when you walk them, when you run them, yes, there are a lot of hills around here. I was walking, trying to set up a a new routine of walking. I had big loops, I had small loops, some hilly loops, some not so hilly loops, and I had just started out. There's a fella sitting on the sidewalk, and if ever I saw the definition of distressed and downtrodden, yeah, it was him. And I thought, I'm going to keep doing what I was doing. 
or am I going to stop? Well, I stopped. I didn't really know what to say. I, so I said, do you mind if I sit down next to you? He didn't even look up. He said, no, that'd be okay. I sat down next to him and I said, tough day? He didn't look over at me. He said, yeah, it's been a really tough day. I sat there in silence with him for a little while. And then he surprised me. He said, what's your favorite Bible verse? I didn't know him. He didn't know me. And I said, well, I like the one that says, God so loved the world that he gave his only son. He started nodding and he said, yeah, I like that one too. And then, then he began to talk. Then he began to talk. And he didn't think anyone cared. He didn't think that, well, these are my words, not here, that anyone saw him or listened to him. He didn't think that anyone cared. So I gave him my name. Can I give him yours? Church. Church. Can I give him yours? The verses that we read this morning said that ask the Lord of the harvest to send out workers. God is calling for workers. And that's you and that's me. Workers who follow not our wants. Workers who follow not the most noble, the highest thing. No. Workers who know what it is to have a restored soul. Who know what it is to have the peace of Christ rule in their hearts. That's you and that's me. Workers that meet to worship Jesus, the good shepherd, and we follow him. Worshipers who reach out, not just when it's convenient, but even when it's not. Folks who together join to, to worship, to reach out, and in Jesus Christ join together in community. There's a world out there that is starving. Starving. Because well, they've been following the wrong shepherd. And you have just what it is that they need. The name. His name is Jesus. This morning it may be that um, you've been following Jesus for a while, but you've not mentioned his name to anyone Maybe not ever. And that Jesus is calling you to follow and he's calling you to be one of his workers. And that today, today is a time that, well, maybe Jesus gave you a nudge. Maybe he gave you a, a little push. Or maybe he gave you a thump on the head. that you might develop those eyes that see and those ears that hear. A hurting world. A world that's distressed. A world that's downcast. A world that needs to know Jesus. Well, I want to pray with you this morning. Join with me in prayer. Let's pray. Jesus, you have power we don't. And that's why we come together to give praise. You have power we don't. That's why we come together to give thanks. That's why we come together to, to practice our listening, to practice our seeing, that we might 
certainly, truly follow you and not our wants. Breathe the power of your spirit on us that we develop your eyes, your ears, that we see what it is you're doing all around us and we, we, we follow you into to your kingdom to have compassion for those who are distressed and downcast around us. Lord, give us that strength. Give us that strength. There's a world that needs to know you. And just looking healthy isn't the same as telling folks who the great physician is. Breathe your strength on us now that we may be your workers starting today. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Hi. Thank you for joining us. My name's Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Our mission here at RUMC is to help people live a Christ-centered life. We're a welcoming church, we're a biblical church, and we're a compassionate church. That the, we believe that the way that, that God made us, that he made us in his image. And what the Bible tells us is that his image is an us, is an our. When God said in the creation story, let us create humans in our image, he made us to be in community together. He made us to connect to him and one another. That's the place that this is at Roswell United Methodist Church, a place of community and faith. I want to invite you to join us. It might be online, it might be through social media, or it might be here in person. We meet at 9 o'clock in a contemporary service with a band. We also have two 1115 services. One is here in the sanctuary with a traditional choir and organ. We also meet at 1115 with a band in our chapel. Thank you for joining us, and I look forward to meeting you.